version of the Spark cores. And uh, the architecture breaks with a couple of trends which we have seen in the last couple of years uh, in high performance computing and in the top 500. The first thing you might notice is that it is a traditional architecture in the sense that it does not use any accelerators. It simply uses the Spark cores to achieve its performance. So that's different from uh, compared to, for instance, the number two uh, or the number four, which both use NVIDIA uh, accelerators to achieve their performance. So it is a traditional architecture. It is a single socket node uh, that also is different from a lot of the systems in the top 500. Uh, each, each of these sockets is a chip with eight cores, and each of these cores actually does eight floating point, uh, uh, eight float, floating point calculations per cycle. Uh, so that's also different, uh, in, in, especially from other uh, Spark-based systems uh, on the list. It has a custom interconnect, which is a six-dimensional mesh and torus interconnect. It's also different. Uh, it breaks off a couple of things. It has a very high number of cores. Uh, the next largest system on the top 500 in terms of cores is actually a, a blue GMP system uh, here in Germany, in Jülich. Uh, with about just a little more than half of the number of cores, 290,000 cores. Uh, it, it trounces the competition by a factor of three and a half to the next, and uh, I believe, as Czech calculated, it takes about five, the next five largest systems to um, sum up on the same uh, peak performance. Uh, it's also the number one in terms of power performance, but as Hans already mentioned, even so that is the highest absolute power performance, it is actually the architecture with the second highest power efficiency if you do divide uh, each achieved performance by the power by the power consumption. So it is a very efficient architecture. Uh, the next four systems were on the top 500 uh, four, uh, six months ago, and they just moved down uh, by one position. And the other two new systems, in some sense, are at number six and number seven. Uh, both systems in the US. Uh, and both systems are actually upgrades to existing systems. So they were on the list before. Uh, CLO was in the top 10 and avoided being, being kicked out by, up, by an upgrade from 6 core to 8 core uh, uh, processors and by having more cores. So they are now about 10 flops they were below before. It's a system at Lawrence, uh, Los Alamos National Labs uh, joined uh, in a collaboration with some national labs. The number 7 uh, system is uh, also an upgrade to a previous system, but the previous player system uh, was not in the top 10, it was actually the number 11 on the last list. So they made uh, their way back into the top 500 by upgrading with the second part of the HGI Arctic the system at the NASA Ames Research Center, Mountain View in, uh, in California. Um, the other thing to note, this time is the first time that the top 10 only has petaflop systems, according to the Olympic benchmark. And that's all the uh, 10 systems we have with a petaflop. So we have 10 petaflop systems now. Uh, the last system here is actually the Roadrunner system, which was the first petaflop system when it came out, uh, when it, uh, came out in, in, in the final configuration. Uh, it is now the number 10, just above the petaflop, and it actually has the lowest, or second to lowest, uh, one of the lowest power consumptions uh, uh, on this list. Uh, some of the new systems, which have a, a higher performance, uh, do actually consume less power, uh, but on average power consumption in this list has gone up uh, at this level. So the top 10 uh, with three changes, as spectacular as the number one change is, is actually with three changes is not that exciting in terms of how, how much news we have. And the question then is how much news do we have in the top 500 overall? And one measure we look at uh, traditionally is uh, what is the number of systems which we kick off on the last list uh, because they no, no, no longer make the new cutoff. And the number uh, recovered to 238, which is uh, slightly above average, uh, but it had, it had, had hit a record low two years, uh, two lists ago, uh, just a year ago. Uh, so we are seeing more and more turnover in the top 500 again, and we seem to be going through some cycles here. And I come back to that later. Another measure we look at to see how dynamic the list is overall is, is simply the, how much uh, the average performance in the list has changed uh, from month, uh, from uh, edition to edition, or in this case, actually from year to year. Uh, and again, after hitting a record, record low increase in performance a year ago, uh, the, the increase in performance, the rate uh, at which we uh, add 
compute capabilities worldwide has increased again, and now we are again above the red line, uh, which is Moore's law. Traditionally, we, has, we have always been about Moore's law on average, and uh, we are heading back in the average ter territory, so we are coming out of that sl slump in this uh, slide again. This is one of the traditional slides which we have to show every year. This is on a logarithmic scale, uh, the performance development of the last system in the list, the first system in the list, and of all 500 systems. And what you see is, of course, um, uh, the effect of Moore's law that you have an exponential growth, and it still continues. Uh, the number 500 still continues. It's leveling off the last couple of editions a little. But overall, you're still on track. Uh, the entry level to the top 500 overall is now uh, just above 40 teraflops. Uh, that's the minimum uh, performance you need to achieve to be on, on this list. Uh, the number one performance is 8.16 teraflop. And you see the big jump up, which occurred first with the Chinese system six months ago, and now with the K computer. And that's probably going to uh, increase, uh, at least for one more list, when the K computer is going to reach its final size. It's not built out to its full size yet, so it will grow. Uh, we had similar jumps in the past. Uh, one here was uh, in the mid-90s, ASCII had the first system which broke the teraflop barrier, which sounds very low these days, and which stayed on as number one for quite a while. And the second big jump here noticeable is actually uh, the Earth simulator was the Earth simulator, uh, which was a similar jump as the K computer. Uh, it had a similar uh, or, or even higher advantage over its competition when it was uh, fully built and released as the Fed computer has right now. And the noticeable thing here, of course, is uh, to notice that these two computer systems, they are not only installed in the same country, Japan, but they're actually built by the same uh, company, by Fujitsu. So if you project naively um, out our exponential growth rates, uh, we, we arrive at this slide, uh, where we go up to one exaflop. Uh, and we see the projection for the number one system to hit that exaflop uh, is still around the end of the uh, decade, about 2019. Uh, that's what we have seen for a while. And as I already said, overall, exponential growth is fine. There's a sl little, little slowdown here at the end of the top 500. Uh, but we have to see if there is a real trend or if it's just an effect of the economic situation and the slowdown in turnover, which we have seen the last two years. Now, what, what are the changes we see in the different categories if you look into the different classification of computer systems? So the first thing we always do, or one of the first things we always do, is look at geographic distribution. And this is a set of slides where we look at the geographic distribution, not by number of systems, but actually by how much performance is installed in a certain country. So this is the total installed performance in teraflops uh, in the United States. And what you see is uh, exponential growth, uh, which seemed to have leveled off a little bit the last couple of years, but that's to be seen if that's uh, temporary or, or, or permanent. Uh, the European share uh, is pretty much parallel, which on a, on, on a, a graph like that is actually um, always a little bit surprising. And the, the big um, surprise this time, or the big new thing this time, of course, is Japan, after having fallen, after having caught up with, with the European Union with the Earth simulator and having trailed off a little bit afterwards. Now with the K computer and also with the Tsubami 2 computer uh, six months ago, uh, they're making big progress in terms of the overall performance installed and they have caught up with the European share again. Now the big news um, uh, six months ago or even a year ago was of course what happens uh, in a country not too far from there and that is China. Uh, China used to be virtually absent from the top 500 in the, in the 1990s uh, and has made a big inroad, has closed a one and a half orders of magnitude gap uh, to Japan and to the European Union. Uh, actually was ahead of Japan for a little while, it's now trailing behind and hasn't quite increased as much as before, but uh, they have two systems in the top 10, so they're, they have quite a bit uh, in installed in terms of overall performance as well as a number of systems. Uh, this is the rest of the world. The rest of the world doesn't follow the Chinese model. It follows pretty much the European or the American model. So China is really the exception here. Uh, if we look at a different category, we can look, for instance, at uh, companies. Um, uh, which companies are building these systems? And by number of systems, you see that IBM 
is, is again in the lead in terms of number of systems with about 43% of the systems built by IBM, ahead of HP with about 31%, and then followed by companies which by large are focusing more on the research market. Uh, IBM and HP have traditionally for almost a decade uh, sold a lot of systems in the commercial markets, so their numbers are high because they have a lot of commercial customers. Uh, while most of the other companies focus on uh, research and academic sites, uh, so there are absolute numbers all over. Uh, third com company by numbers is actually Play uh, at this time, 29 systems, SGI 19, Dell, uh, Oracle, which used to be Sun, Bill, Fujitsu, and uh, the rest of the world. Uh, we can look at the same statistic for a smaller subsample. I already said that uh, the very high end uh, is in a way different. The top 50 systems uh, represent a different slice of the market. Uh, than the top 500 overall, uh, the main difference being that there are very few or no, uh, very few in this case, uh, commercial industrial customers uh, which are in the top 50. So if you just focus on the top 50, you get a representation of what goes on in the government research space and in the ac academic sites. So what you see here is that in, in the space of very big systems, top 50, uh, and a research institution, Cray is actually the leading company with 17 system systems ahead of IBM, SGI, uh, and the other companies. So you have a, a quite a noticeable difference uh, in terms of your statistics, depending on how large a system you look at. Now, um, we have a lot of data in the top 500, and there are different um, methods to visualize data. One way to deal with large data sets, visualize large data sets, are so-called tree maps. So what I show here is a, a tree map, a simple version of a tree map. What it shows you is, uh, each of these little squares here represents the performance of a single computer on the top 500. So you have a, a total of about 500 of these little rectangles, and they have different sizes according to the performance. I grouped them and colored them by the manufacturer of the system. So what you see here is all the Fujitsu systems, and you notice that there is one system which is much larger than the other Fujitsu system, and accounts for most of the performance installed by Fujitsu. That's, of course, the K-computer. And to make it a little easier to find your way around, I actually tried to fit in the names of these computers. About the 500 names, that gets a little overcrowded easily, so I picked just the, the top 50. So what you see here now is actually the names. Here's K-computer, that's a top 50 system, and that's the only system Fujitsu has in the top 50. Uh, you see Cray has a quite, a, quite a, uh, a large number of top 50 systems. That's because they are the leader in the top, top 50. They have 17 systems in that category. Uh, they don't sell very small systems. Uh, IBM has a couple of top 50 systems. And this one here, where the label is cut off, is actually a new one. It's a Power 7 system, a, a Power 775 system. And that, I point that out because that is the number 50 system. So any square smaller than this type of square is not going to have a label and is not in the top 50. Uh, the, the other thing you see is, of course, the beer, there is no, no company, no big company, uh, up down to April, uh, which does not have a top 50 system. So if you want to have a big entry into top 500, and this is basically sorted or weighed by performance, you have to have big, uh, big, big systems. So uh, when we have, when we take this coloring, and here is the legend for the five uh, main companies uh, this time around, when you, when you take a, a graph like that, of course you can sort it or color it different ways. So I'm going to show this and a similar slide in different colorings. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to keep my colors uh, for my companies, but instead of grouping them by manufacturer, I'm just going to show the list sorted by size. So same colors, but different sorting. Looks like this. Now this basically shows the number one system, K computer, uh, with its performance. Uh, very large, Tianyi 1A, uh, the Chinese system, followed by Chagua, which received the award today. Uh, Nebula, second Chinese system. Tsubami 2, second Japanese system. Uh, Cielo players, Hopet, Terra, Terra 100, the number nine system, which is the largest one in Europe. And you see it colored uh, by manufacturer. So if you look at that visually, uh, you get a couple of impressions. Uh, and the ones I got, the ones I saw is, first of all, red is on top. Uh, it's not so much on the bottom, and that's clear because red is all, all the systems from Cray. Cray tries to sell big systems, they sell the research sites, they tend to be uh, on top. 
Uh, the second, um, not, uh, the second thing I noticed is that the top has uh, many more colors than the bottom overall. Um, the reason for that is that at the top you have small companies which sell one or two very large systems, uh, such as Fujitsu, such as SGI Player, such as Bill with the Terra 100, uh, IBM with Roadrunner and others. While at the bottom uh, you mostly have two colors. And the two, the two colors at the bottom is blue for IBM and the light green uh, for HP. So the bottom of the list uh, is pretty much split by IBM and HP with a few other colors, while the top of the list is where really uh, all the companies try to play uh, in the certain niche. The other thing you notice is the names break off here, which is pretty much uh, visually um, pretty much in the middle uh, of the performance overall. And that has been the case uh, since the beginning of the top 500, that, that it takes about 40 to 50 systems to accumulate half of the aggreg aggregate performance in the top 500. And you can see that actually visually uh, again in this slide. Now, if, if I look uh, briefly in a more traditional way at countries again, I already said United States uh, is clearly leading. China, by number of systems, has actually uh, twice as many systems as the biggest European countries, 62 systems, uh, followed by Germany, UK, Japan, and then France. Uh, that's the biggest uh, companies, and it's very traditional. Uh, the main difference which we have seen over the last couple of years is really, if I focus on the Asian countries, uh, the development in China with a steep rise in the number of installed s systems as well as in the installed performance uh, during the last uh, one or two years. Uh, so that's a, a, a big jump. Uh, Japan doesn't make nearly a big jump in this statistic because it counts systems. I don't wait by performance, it's just the number of systems. Uh, in Europe, uh, the last couple of years, we have a steady triumvirate uh, from Germany, UK and France. They trade places, but in overall they're about the same in terms of installed a number of systems and performance. So, uh, not that much changes here uh, and a lot of smaller players. Uh, one exception uh, I would like to make here is that Recently, actually, the number of systems uh, installed in Russia has been growing steadily. It's still low, it's 6%, uh, but it has been growing for the last two or three years. And one of the big companies uh, benefiting from that or active there is obviously T-platforms. So, I'm coming back to a tree map. Uh, I, tried, uh, I tried a second way to look at the data set overall. And what I did now is I sorted my rectangles by where these systems are installed. So uh, the green ones here now, all the systems installed in the United States, uh, purpose Japan, China, Germany, France, UK, Russia, South Korea, Canada, Sweden, Italy, uh, Australia, 